Hey Ed, Richard Richardson here. Uh, you and I talked earlier today. I'm showing you and your wife these two stoves. This one to the right is the Wings Best. This one to the left is the Railway uh, King number 22. Both of these stoves have their own features. Uh, the reason I'm standing in between them is so you get a true size, true perspective of size. Um, so I'll start with the one to my left first. This is called a Station Agent Number 22. You can see the name right here. You can see uh, the name over and through here. This stove traditionally is used in railroad stations. That's why they call it a Station Agent. The top of this, as you can see, is shaped like a mushroom. So it comes out and flares down. And the reason for that is so that as the heat comes off of the pot, it gets caught right here and then reflex down on the ground like this for a more efficient uh, distribution of heat. It's got a nice large loading door, as you can see. To uh, fit wood into it, the door is more than comfortable. Wood just drops in. Pretty simple. Uh, it has a nickel door. This little door right here is so that you can light your fire and shake your grates down. Down and through here is where your ash pan and removable. It was made by the Union Stove Works, New York City. The ribs on the stove are all designed for additional heat like a radiator has. Uh, the flue comes off of the top. It's a six inch flue. Uh, it's got nickel feet on it. It's a really beautiful stove. Uh, more of a, uh, a little bit more of a workhorse kind of a feel. More of a commercial look like you would see in any railroad station at the turn of the century. The next one, which is the one that I recommend for you, is the Wings Best. The Wings Best uh, came out of Taunton, Mass, right next to Glenwood. Michael windows down through here. Nickel dome up top. The dome swings. When it swings, there's a removable cook lid. The cook lid swings over to the right. The dome is all cut out so the heat can transfer up. I want to show you the two finials that come with this that I can offer you. This one right here was the Glenwood finial right here. And then I have another one. I'm going to go get it. Which is a tad bit fancier, but one that actually did come with the stove. So I can offer you either finial depending on what finial you like the best. That's the, that's the original one. This is the Glenwood one. As they sit next to each other, you get a sense of what it is that floats your boat. I'll leave this one on since this is the original. But I can offer you either video. This stove here, this is the steel jacket I told you about. Right here. And then the rest of the stove is solid cast iron. It has mica windows, it has nickel handles for opening the doors, nickel draft controls, a nickel clean out door here. This is your accessibility to the grates. Down below is the ash pan. The purpose for the skirts are similar to the mushroom top on that stove there. The heat is reflected down onto the floor and then pops back up. Same thing as it comes off of here. Reflects down and then back up. These are the two doors that I spoke to you about. Now I'm going to take a minute to show you the convenience of loading this stove.
And then if you want more convenience, you open up this door and you can load in that way. Now you can see clearly what I meant by the convenience of being able to load the stove. This is a smoke door to keep the smoke from rolling out into the room uh, and catches right here. And then when you want to fit more and larger wood in, you just open that door up. Naturally, you wouldn't open it up until you got to the stove, but you get to the stove, you open it up, you put your wood in, you close it. Spring loaded draft controls. Look at how nice and tight they are. See what I'm saying? Uh, look at the door. Look, look at the fit on the door. It fits like a glove. In the back of the stove, I'm hoping that you can see it. This is the uh, smoke chamber I talked about. The smoke enters into the back. There's also another little removable cook lid. Travels down the bottom of the stove, around the base of the stove, comes back around, comes back up through this chamber, which has a recycling chamber in it right here, and comes out this way. On this side of the stove is your damper to open and shut the flue. This opens, this closes. This is a wonderful stove. Both of these stoves, very, very beautiful. Both of them are rare. Both of them are sizable. Powerful heaters. Uh, wherever you decide to put it in the room, this is going to heat without any issues at all, without really even working at it. So, again, uh, I'll close by switching the finials back and forth. I'll close also by saying I'll talk to you a little later in the day. Um, you have an idea. Let me grab my tape measure for a minute. This one is 24 by 27 by 65. The one next to it is 26 by 26 by 4 feet. So this one to my left is taller. The depth on this firebox is 19 inches, but you would stand your wood up vertically. The wood that I showed you I put in the stove was cut for 18 inches. This one here is 16 inches, and your wood would go in vertically, which would be, you could see that 18 inch thick of wood. Again, one more time without trying to make things more confusing. This is the original finial, which is a very beautiful finial. This is a Glenwood finial, which is the one that you like that in the stove, just like this. Wonderful stove, powerful heater, great looking stove. Whichever stove you choose, you and your wife, I am positive, will be very happy with. Well, I wish I could say to you, let's wander around my shop, but um, you're not here. Best I can do is the videos. So anyway, Ed, I'm going to get this out to you and you and I can talk today.